Now that we've covered the basic equations for acceleration and velocity, let's move on to a vector notation form of these equations. So we'll first talk about curvilinear motion, which just means a particle is moving along to a curved path. So I'll just draw a, a particle here that's moving on a curved path. It doesn't need to be circular, but it could be. And if we want to write down the position of that particle, we can write a vector r, right? We've been through these position vectors before, and we can call that position vector r. Let's say it moves along this path uh, over time, and it moves to a new position, and we'll call the new position here, we'll call that r prime, okay? So if we want to find the average velocity of this particle, in vector form, we would want to do the change in r, change in that r vector from here to here over the change in time. All right, and that change in r vector here is, I'll draw that vector out. That change in r vector is a straight line from our initial position to our end position. So that is our change in r. All right. Now that we have the change in R here, what we're actually looking for is this displacement or change in S here. And you can tell by the change in R and the change in S, right, there's some differences here. Right? If, so if we took the particle at time one and time two here, right, to get a more accurate representation or the instantaneous velocity, right, we would want T1 and T2 to be a closer time together. And the closer these particles then become to each other, the better that the change in R approximates the change in S, right? These two, the gap between these two becomes smaller and smaller. So for the instantaneous velocity, we actually look for dr dt. So that's the derivative of the vector R with respect to t. Given a vector R, so how do we find the velocity now? So let's move on to, we're given the vector r, which is usually written as some x component in the i direction, plus some y component in the j direction, plus some uh, z component in the k direction. All right, so if we want to find the velocity vector, that is dr dt, so what we would do is then take the derivative of the, the x here. So we would take dx dt, and that would be in the i direction, and then dy dt in the j direction, and then dz dt in the k direction. Now, writing dx dt every time gets a little cumbersome, and dy dt, it's a lot of writing, and it kind of muddies everything up. So a lot of times we use this notation called Newton's notation. Newton's notation. And what Newton's notation is, is dx dt is just written as x dot. So this dot on the top just means that the first derivative of x with respect to time. And dy dt is written as y dot. And dz dt is written as z dot. Z dot. So these equations become much simpler to write the velocity vector is just x dot i plus y dot j plus z dot, whoop, plus z dot k, all right? And that's one way to write it. And moving on to the acceleration now, we can write the acceleration as the second derivative of x with respect to time. So we would just write that x double dot i plus y double dot j plus z double dot k and we would take the derivative of our velocity vector again to get the acceleration. 